Since its debut almost five years ago now, Anno 1800 has captured the hearts of millions of players across the world. New players to this day are still discovering this game and learning all the ins and outs of managing a city and their trade routes and the economy along with it. However, there are sometimes pieces of information or advice given to newer players that is either incorrect or really kind of taken out of context. So let's take a look at four myths that are told from the Anno community to newer players and clear the air on some of them and get you some better information about how some of this works. And if you find any of this video helpful at all, do me a big favor and leave a like and a comment down below. If you have not already, subscribe to the channel for more Anno 1800 content. I know it's a little cheesy to say, but it does help the channel out tremendously, and I cannot do this without you guys' support. So big, big thanks for everything so far. So to get us started, let's talk about farm fields. I see a lot of people advise newer players that if they are building their farms, they can hold down shift and place additional fields. And now that is true. As you can see right here, I can place up to 244 fields. However, adding those extra fields does nothing unless you have an item or specialist that increases the percent number of tiles available to a farm and increases its productivity. If you have the Bright Harvest DLC, you can put tractors on your farms to increase the number of possible fields, which increases its productivity as well. Just adding on extra fields by holding down shift won't do anything. As you can see, the processing time for this grain farm is still one minute, even with 244 fields. If you are interested in what sort of items do this, you can go under the items tab of the statistics screen, tick that unknown box, and type in modules right here. That is the keyword that you're looking for. All of these items right here will increase the possible number of modules or decrease the number of modules. Some of them will decrease it as well as increase productivity, but most of them increase the number of modules and increase productivity. The only reason you would add modules to a farm without an item or specialist is if you're just trying to fill an area in and you just need to take up a couple of tiles. Otherwise, it's a complete waste of space and it's not going to do you any good. Now this next one, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate on and I'm gonna have a lot of people yelling at me down in the comments about. So go ahead, get your little fingers ready on those keyboards because I'm about to say, you don't need luxuries to make money. I know, I just said it. You don't need luxuries to make money. This is a little town I threw together in about uh, 15 minutes or so. I do play on triple speed when I'm building though, so this is be about eh, 35 to 40 minutes, roughly real time. But it took me about 15 minutes on triple speed to throw this little town of artisans together. We have about just shy of 2,000 total global population. We are not in the new world, and we have a balance of 1,500 right now. Now, if we go in here and take a look, you'll see that well, I'm, I am not supplying anything that can give us coins. No variety theater, no beer, no rum. Over here, no schnapps, no beer. Now, we are supplying a pub, but that is specifically for the happiness. You need to keep your happiness of your people at least content, preferably in the green on a happy population. So you do want to supply your workers and farmers with a pub, and that will give you a little bit of money. But this doesn't require any production chains or anything. It's just a single building. But I have not supplied any luxury goods to our citizens. And I am making a profit of 1500 right now. Now, these are on normal settings on high income. If I was on low income, you would reduce that down by about 20 to 25 percent. So it would take it down to maybe closer to 1200 ish, uh, 11 to 1200 balance right there. Low income is only 20 percent less than high income. The trap that a lot of newer players fall into is that they expand too quickly and expand too much and have too many production buildings, too many ships, too much everything, and they need a lot of luxury goods coming in to make a lot of money. Now, I will say this. Yes, I am making 1500 I could be making a lot more, obviously, if I had beer and rum, and of course I need a variety theater built to get that one, but I can make a little coin from that. But if I had beer, rum, and schnapps supplied, yes, I would be making a lot more money. However, this is just to show you that you do not need to supply luxury goods to make a balance in the game. 
you can have a healthy, stable economy without supplying luxury goods. If we take a look at our production screen right here, you'll see that basically everything is pretty steady. I'm a little short on wood, but that's okay. This is just making timber for us right now, so having a 1% underproduction is not going to hurt me. I'll cap out on timber, and I'll have enough in stock, and I can get some more. It's not a big deal. But as far as our consumer goods, I have, I'm have i making just enough fish. I'm making just enough work clothes. Pigs, sausage, bread. Now here's a fun one that uh, I talk about sometimes in different videos. I'm underproducing tallow, but that's actually okay because I am making enough soap. The way the soap production chain works is it is two pig farms, two tallow for one soap maker. So one tallow will essentially supply up to 50% of the demand of your city. I am under 50% right now. So if I was over 50% of my demand bar, then I would build the other tallow and increase my production to meet the rest of the demand. Before then, I only need the one tallow. So this is actually not an underproduction. I'm actually balanced right there. The same can be done with your uh, bakery chain. Early on, you really only need one bakery. So you can do one grain farm and one bakery. Once you need another bakery, add the other grain farm in. It saves a little bit of money. I have everything balanced out, and that's all that is needed to make a steady balance. Make sure you have a decent sized population, and make sure your productions are balanced. As long as you have that done, you will make money. But a lot of people are going to say, but Taka, what happens when you have to build all this expensive stuff in the artisan chain? Windows starts costing a little bit. The canned food chain costs a lot. Sewing machines are very expensive. That's fine. Just expand your population a little bit more. If you need to cover the cost, build more houses, upgrade them, and build more production chains to support that, you will make profit. Artisan and engineer kind of are that phase of the game where money starts getting a little bit tighter again until you hit the investor phase. So it's okay. Just expand your population to make up the costs. It's totally doable. You don't have to supply those luxury goods if you don't want to. Now, they do help with happiness, and they do help with more income, but you don't have to. Another fun strategy for that is you could actually turn stuff off. I could turn off schnapps to my farmers and only supply it to my workers instead. Make them happy, give them, I get more coin, and I get more happiness out of it. I could supply it just to my workers or vice versa. Turn off schnapps to the workers and only supply it to the farmers. Workers consume double the amount of schnapps that a farmer does, so you'll actually save on how much schnapps you need to produce if you only supplied it to the farmers. You could do the same for beer. Turn it off for the workers, give it to the artisans, or vice versa. However you want to do that. You don't have to supply every single thing unless you really want to. And if you really want to, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do that. But my point is that you do not have to supply luxury goods in order to make a profit. You just have to keep your productions in balance and make sure you have the population needed to cover the cost of the maintenance. So there is a somewhat hidden concept in Anno that we like to call the profitability of consumer goods. What that means is that for every production chain, you need to make sure you have enough people to cover the maintenance cost. I know I said that at the last one, and I'm sure a few people were scratching your heads on it. So let's take a look at the sewing machine chain to get an idea of what I'm talking about with profitability of goods. If we take a look here, the sewing machine factory costs 500 maintenance. The furnace costs 100, each of the mines are 50, and then the wood is only 10, so we don't really worry about that. What we're worried about is this part right here. This is 700 coins, that's 700 maintenance total. Artisans on normal difficulty will give you 15 coins for supplying the sewing machines to the house. That's baseline without any modifiers that increase or decrease the amount of coins. Baseline of 15 coins for supplying sewing machines. That means I need 34 artisan homes in order to break even. So you will see me in a lot of my playthroughs mass upgrade artisans until I have between 50 and 60 artisan homes. That is because of that profitability of consumer goods. I want to be sure I have enough artisans 
that when I build my sewing machines, fur coats, and the canned food, that I'm going to make a bit of a profit and I won't be losing money on those. Now, canned food, as many of you know, if you're longtime viewers of my channel, is a completely different story where technically you actually won't ever make profit on it until it's electrified because of the way the money and stuff on it works out. Uh, if you want some more information on that, do check out the video that's popping up in the upper right corner right now where I discuss canned food and the downfalls of it. But for most everything else in the game, except canned food, consumer goods and happiness goods, they have a break-even point, essentially. And all you have to do is go in, look at the chain, add up the cost of all of the different parts, and then divide that by how many coins you get for supplying it. That's how many houses you need. Engineers is where this really, really comes into effect. The spectacle chain, for example, is extremely expensive. It's a thousand for the spectacle factory, 250 for the brass smeltery, 100 for the glass maker, 120 for the sand mine, and then 250 each for these. This is such an expensive chain right here. This is over almost 1800 coins, between 18 and 1900 coins right here. You need a lot of engineers to make that up. You'll get 25 coins for that. And if we go, we highball it to 1900, you'll need 76 engineer homes to break even on it. Now it can supply far more than 76 homes, but that's just how many you need to break even. So a lot of people go in and they unlock the spectacle factory, they slap it down, then all of a sudden they are in the negative or their income has been absolutely gutted just because they built this and they don't understand why. The question comes up, I just built the spectacle factory, I'm supplying it to them, why do I lose money? You're losing money because you're not breaking even on it. So you have to be sure that whatever you're building, you can break even on it for consumer goods. Now there are some things that are not consumer goods, of course, that you need to be careful of when you're building. The steam motors is a very, very costly chain right here. It costs well over 2200 coins to maintain the steam motor assembly plant. Do you need it? Do you need this motor assembly line in the artisan phase? Realistically, no. You need steam motors to build cargo ships and to build some of the more advanced ships and everything. Do you need that as soon as you hit engineers? Not really. You can get away with using clippers until investors, to be honest with you. You really can. Unless you have the spare income, I would not build the steam motors. I typically don't build steam motors until much, much later. And I stick with clippers or I'll buy a couple of cargo ships from the neutral traders such as Archie or Isabel. They will sell cargo ships. They are expensive. They're about 300000 to buy one. But by this point in the game, I typically have several million coins just from doing passive trades and active trades to the AI and money just from my balance and everything. So spending 300000 on a few ships is not going to be a big deal, and it saves on my balance right here. So that's just a couple of examples right there, but go through, whenever you go to build something, make sure that you need it. Make sure you can support it financially before you build it. Don't just build it because it's unlocked. Now this next myth is one that is very near and dear to my heart. And that one is that the Arctic is challenging. Now, I will say that for a new player, the Arctic can be daunting. There's a lot going on here for only two residential tiers, and the gas plateaus can seem very, very overwhelming. However, I am here to tell you that the Arctic is not as difficult as it's made out to be and as you might think it is. I do have an entire guide on the Arctic that I am going to have linked down below in the comment section pinned at the top that you can check out to get a full view of how I do the Arctic. I do the Arctic the same way every single time. So let's take a look at a couple things that I know that people do in the Arctic that makes it challenging and a couple of quick ways that you can help yourself to make it not as difficult. I do recommend giving my Arctic guide a watch so you can get a full overview of how to deal with it. One of the first big things that I know a lot of people do is they are trying to fulfill the, all of these heating needs, schnapps, coffee, parkas, and sleeping bags. 
I am going to be completely heretical here, and I'm going to tell you that you do not need to supply all of this stuff. They will have heat as a baseline because they have to be built within range of a heater, but all of these other goods right here, you don't need to supply these. The only thing that heat does is it does reduce the chance of illnesses breaking out. Now, when I just started talking about the Arctic, you saw I had a little outbreak of Arctic flu. Well, it's almost already gone. These two houses right here are being cured of it, and then I'll have these two. I just have a handful of ranger stations placed around. I've got three right there and a fourth one right here. And that's it. They're taking care of all of my problems with any flu that breaks out. That's it. That's the only thing that it does. You could get these for coins, but it's such little coin that you get from it that it's really not worth it to supply it for the coin. You normally would supply it for the heat. But again, you don't really need it. My Arctic flu was already taken care of. It didn't spread. The city isn't falling apart because of Arctic flu. They're fine. You don't need to supply heating goods. That in and of itself takes out a huge chunk of the headache of trying to supply everything that you need to your islands in the Arctic. Now the gas plateaus are where a lot of players do kind of struggle a little bit. And the gas plateaus can be a little challenging to set up and get started. But once you have them up and running, they're really easy to take care of. When I'm starting my gas plateaus, I'll usually build somewhere around 60 to 65 explorer homes to start with. Those 60 to 65 explorer homes will let me have enough population to unlock to unlock the oil lamps and to be able to upgrade into explorers. Then I can upgrade as many as I need into those explorers to cover all of my Arctic gas mines. Depending on how you lay out your Arctic gas plateaus, if you do like I do and you do clipping, which uh, here, I got a clipped one right here. If you do these, this clipping with the two Arctic lodges affecting a single gas, uh, a single gas mine, then you're probably going to have a few more refineries than you really need. That way you can cover everything as much as possible. But you're going to need typically between 750 and 1,250 technicians on an island. So you need to build enough explorers in order to have enough technicians and then get them supplied with everything. I supplied them with all their goods right here. And then again, no heating goods other than just the heat. If we take a look at my trade routes right here, I have a gas support. You can see that I am picking up all the gas on the gas plateau and bringing it back to King William Island. And I'm picking up uh, husky sleds and canned food and dropping it off. Now, if you watch my video, you'll see that I do talk about how I adjust this later on. This is my initial setup for one gas plateau. I'll do this one right here for a second gas plateau, but then later on I will divide it all up. But if I have a support, then that's all I have to do. I pick up what I need, oil lamps, pemmican, and coal. And I'm also picking up copper because I'm making that from the item that I'm using on my gas mines. And I'm dropping that back off over there in order to make the oil lamps with an item that you craft at Nate. That where your oil lamps can be crafted with copper instead of brass. So it's a self-feeding system right here. And I don't have to worry about any of it. It takes care of itself. I've never had to deal to adjust this or fix it or anything. So the Arctic is actually very easy as long as you don't supply heating goods and you take each of the gas plateau and you give it its own support island and produce what you need other than canned food and husky sleds there and bring the husky sleds and canned food from King William Island up there to it. It's really not that difficult. It's really not that bad. It's not as daunting as it seems. One last thing about the Arctic is when you get to the Arctic, if you are playing against medium and hard AI, that's two star and three star AI, they will not come to the region until you build your first airship here from the quest line. What I tell people to make sure you do is go grab all of these little islands, not the gas plateaus if you don't want them right now, but go grab all of the basic islands right here. The reason for that is the AI, if they have nowhere to settle on a regular island, will not come to the region. It only takes 44 influence to settle all regular islands in the Arctic. That's it. 44 influence. It's so cheap. 
Each of the gas plateaus is four influence each, so that's another 12 right there. So 56 influence total to settle the Arctic. That is all you need. So before you come to the Arctic, it's a safe area. They will not come here until you build your first airship in the region. So wait until you have 56 extra influence. Then you can come up here and go ahead and start grabbing all the islands before you build your first airship. Then you never have to worry about the AI coming here to take anything from you. And all the gas belongs to you. All right, guys, and that is it. That's four things that I still see talked about amongst the Anno community to this day that hopefully I have shed some light on and explained a little bit better about how they work and why some of those myths needed a little bit of correction. If you have anything you'd like me to talk about, let me know down below, and I will see you in the next video.